With inflation surging, what inflation rate assumption should you use in your long-term retirement projections to determine how much you need to save and whether you're on track? Should you change your inflation rate assumptions in your retirement projections? I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, hopefully inflation is peaking. And because inflation's a rate of change number, as long as inflation is cooling a little bit and not still surging at the same pace, we're gonna see that inflation number come down. So I know it's a relief and we, the Wall Street cheered the inflation news that we got back in November. We'll see what December says, but it's a rate of change number. So by sort of by default, uh, unless we continue printing money and doing some sort of egregious things, inflation should start calming down. Does it come back down to 2%? Yeah, I think it's gonna take a while. Uh, will we have a double dip, or excuse me, double top inflation like we had back in the, the late 70s, early 80s where inflation went up? started coming back down, went all the way back up to the peak and then came down again. Will we see that? I think the odds are actually okay. <laughs> like not okay, that would not be okay, but I think the odds are there's a chance of that, okay? But as long as gasoline, right? Depending on where you live, this could be a bad analogy. Gas went from $2 to $4. As long as gas doesn't go from four to eight, then inflation, the inflation rate's gonna come down. And obviously that applies to chicken wings, that applies to you know housing and all that sort of stuff. But get but prices would continue, they would need to continue rising at that rate. Most of us think, well, inflation goes away when prices go back down to where they were. That's that's not the case. Prices just need to not accelerate as quickly. And so we're seeing inflation roll over, but I don't think it's dropping like a rock. I don't think it's dropping as fast as the Fed thinks or the Fed wants or some economists want. Um, we will see. So if we're in this inflationary time, what inflation assumption, what inflation rate are you using in your long-term retirement projection? Guys, this is critical because as you're doing the analysis to figure out how much you need to save to determine are you on track to retire when you want with the lifestyle you want to optimize social security and to do all the things that you wanna do, you're factoring out your financial life over decades and decades and decades. Uh, typically, typically, when you're in your late 20s, early 30s, you're just getting started, it's about building the right habits, building the right habits, building the right habits. You're likely not gonna build a five-factor retirement plan when you're that young. You've gotta focus on contributing 15% towards retirement every single year, making sure your financial house is in order so that is, that's not at risk, and try to have those going into tax shelters. But by the time you get to 40, maybe your mid 40s, you might want to, depending on your situation, build that five-factor retirement plan. And if you think about it, you certainly you know may build it in your 40s. You're definitely gonna build it in your 50s and definitely by 60, okay? So you got me? But your life expectancy is 85, 90. So what, you're projecting out 50 years, 40 years, 30 years of what your financial life is going to look like. And even though up until right now, inflation was this, this sort of like carbon monoxide silent killer, it, it, you don't really notice that it's there, but it is there. Um, now we all feel it, absolutely. But when you're projecting out, am I saving enough? Can I retire when I want to? Can I spend what I want to in retirement? You've got one of the most important variables is what are you using, what are you, what are you assuming for, for inflation? I talk about this five-factor retirement plan, done lots of videos on it, um, to determine whether you can retire and whether you're on track to retire, it's a combination of five different choices, five different factors, okay, that each one is interrelated with the others. They're not independent. So the age at which you wanna be done and also life expectancy, is related to how much you spend. And how much you spend isn't just, well, you know, groceries. It's your normal living expenses. It's vacations. It's health insurance. It's taxes. All of that applied to an inflation rate over time. Okay, so how much you spend, what your income sources are gonna be, how you're gonna optimize Social Security, will you have any other income, how much you're saving and how much you have saved up, and then how much investment risk you're comfortable taking. All of those are interrelated. They're all connected. If you, are, if you don't wanna take any investment risk, then that means you're gonna to have to save more, 
you're going to need more retirement income. You're going to need to work longer, maybe spend less. Okay, that's the that's the common analogy. But you can look at any one of those; they're interrelated. So, going back to that spending, first and foremost, when you're doing your retirement projection or whoever is helping you with that, do you actually know what the inflation assumption is? Do you know, guys? The the online retirement calculator or the financial advisor who just manages your investments and says, "Oh, I'll help you with retirement too," or your 401k uh, statement that talks about income. Do you even know what inflation assumption they're using, guys? There's one thing I, I've been doing this 20 years. When if, when I'm building a five-factor retirement plan, if I want to change the output significantly. All I need to do is tweak the inflation assumption just by the slightest amount. And the results vary wildly, wildly. So what inflation assumption are you using? First question I'd ask is, do you even know? If you don't and your advisor doesn't, you're working with the wrong advisor, you're not getting the right help. Second, are you saying, well, I'm gonna use today's inflation rate. So I'm using 8% right now. If you assume inflation is going to be at 8% per year for the rest of your life, for 50 years, you're going to be astounded as to how much you're gonna to need to save, how little you'll be able to spend, and what, what impact that does on your retirement. Guys, our economy cannot function at an 8% inflation rate, 7%, 6%, 5%. It doesn't work. And I know before this, the Fed and economists were looking and saying, well, we've got to increase wages. So how can we get wage pressure going? And maybe we're, we can tolerate a little bit more inflation so that people can get paid a little bit more. Guys, nah, it's, it's, it's connected. It is connected. And because we're a consumer-driven society, a debt-driven society, and inflation rates and interest rates need to be in parity, we can't, the, the economy can't survive at those high of interest rates. It needs to come back down. So I would argue, not to use today's 8% or 7%, something like that. I mean, you can, you can filter it in there. I, I just don't think it's going to uh, show you a helpful result. So then the, the other question, were you using 1% in your inflation assumptions a couple years ago? I would argue that's way too dangerous as well. To us, I would recommend a smoothing, okay? A smoothing of what the long-term inflation rate is. And if you look, depending on the season, okay, three, four percent, you could argue, well, it's been two for, for a while, 2.2, something like that. We've used 3% on average, and that is because we believe that's a, uh, a, a consistent average inflation rate but it's not just based on CPI, it's based on your living expenses. To me, when prices shoot up in one area, I substitute. I will, I will change my habits because nah, it's too expensive to do that. I, we, you know, we haven't gone to Disney in a while. We don't go out to eat as much. We, you know, I haven't had a steak in a long time. And some of you say, that's crazy. Blah, blah, blah. I, I not, it's not really my taste. And as prices went crazy, I eh, do chicken. Or it doesn't really matter to me, right? So, and, and you've got the things that really matter where you say, ah, price goes up, I'm still gonna do this. But you also have the things that, well, as the price goes up, you say, I, I guess I don't need that anymore. That's substitution. And therefore, for us, a 3% inflation rate assumption going out throughout retirement is a fair assumption. We inflate health-related expenses at a higher percentage, okay? And we inflate other things at a lower percentage, depending on the client situation, your situation. We inflate Social Security, for example, at a lower number than that 3%, which mathematically isn't isn't officially possible. But again, you want to have a an average number, but err on the side of being conservative. So that's the question. What inflation rate are you using in your retirement assumptions? It is going to wildly change the results. So is it an accurate number? Is it a helpful number? Or is it garbage in, garbage out, and you shouldn't trust the output? Work with your certified financial planner on this. And once you build out that retirement plan, if you think, like I think, hey, inflation could be hot for longer than what people expect, stress test it then and say, well, what happens if inflation averages 4% for the next decade and then drops back down? You can model that out and get all the clarity that you need so that you can have a confident retirement plan. Work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. There you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.